This lecture provides a structured overview of the ACLS Megacode exam. The Megacode exam evaluates a healthcare provider's ability to manage complex cardiovascular emergencies in real-time simulations. Passing this exam demonstrates competency in high-stakes scenarios such as cardiac arrest, stroke, and arrhythmias. The test is designed to ensure that providers can deliver timely and effective care in life-threatening situations. Understanding the Megacode Test Format The Megacode test uses high-fidelity mannequins and team-based scenarios to mimic real emergencies. Scoring focuses on adherence to ACLS guidelines, timeliness of interventions, and teamwork. Providers often face challenges such as managing stress, multitasking, and making decisions under pressure. Success in this exam requires preparation and familiarity with the testing environment. BLS and ACLS algorithms. Basic life support must always come first. Confirm unresponsiveness, call for help, and initiate cardiopulmonary resuscitation immediately. For cardiac arrest, follow the CAB sequence, circulation, airway, and breathing. Prioritize defibrillation for shockable rhythms. In cases of bradycardia, assess for instability and use atropine or pacing as needed. For tachycardia, synchronized cardioversion is appropriate for unstable patients, while antiarrhythmic medications are used for stable cases. Rhythm recognition. Rhythm recognition is a key skill during the Megacode exam. Shockable rhythms, such as ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia, require immediate defibrillation. Non-shockable rhythms, including pulseless electrical activity and asystole, require cardiopulmonary resuscitation and identification of reversible causes. Accurate rhythm interpretation ensures appropriate interventions. Pharmacology. Medications play a significant role in ACLS. Epinephrine is administered intravenously at a dose of 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes during cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Amiodarone is given intravenously at a dose of 300 mg for refractory ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia. Double-check dosages and contraindications to avoid errors. Systematic approach. A systematic approach is essential during the Megacode exam. The primary survey addresses life-threatening issues first. For example, if there is no pulse, start cardiopulmonary resuscitation immediately. The secondary survey uses the H's and T's mnemonic to identify reversible causes. These include hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ions indicating acidosis, hyperkalemia or hypokalemia, hypothermia, tension pneumothorax, tamponade, toxins, and thrombosis in either the coronary or pulmonary systems. Communication and team dynamics. Clear communication and effective team dynamics are critical. Assign roles clearly by designating specific tasks. For example, instruct one team member to manage the airway while another prepares medications. Use closed-loop communication to confirm instructions. For instance, say epinephrine 1 mg intravenously pushed and ensure acknowledgement from the team member. Time management. Time management is vital during the Megacode exam. Prioritize actions by starting cardiopulmonary resuscitation while others prepare the defibrillator. Avoid delays by limiting rhythm analysis to 10 seconds and acting decisively. Timely interventions improve patient outcomes. Common megacode scenario, cardiac arrest. In cardiac arrest scenarios, perform high-quality cardiopulmonary resuscitation with a compression depth of 2 inches and a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Defibrillate within two minutes for shockable rhythms. After return of spontaneous circulation, treat reversible causes, monitor temperature, and assess the patient for percutaneous coronary intervention candidacy. Common megacode scenario, bradycardia and tachycardia. For bradycardia, administer atropine intravenously at a dose of one milligrams first. If the patient remains unresponsive, escalate to pacing. For tachycardia, if the patient is unstable, cardiovert immediately. If the patient is stable, consider adenosine or amiodarone based on the clinical context. Pitfalls to avoid. 
Avoid deviating from ACLS algorithms unless contraindicated. Encourage team members to speak up if they notice potential errors. For example, a team member might say, I need to confirm the dose. Address these concerns promptly to maintain accuracy. Post-test review and improvement. After the test, participate in debriefing sessions to discuss what worked and what did not. Use practice tools such as the ACLS Certification Prep app or online simulators like ACLS Interactive to refine skills. Continuous improvement through practice and feedback enhances performance in future assessments. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.